close bloody call for Korea today. But that is that. All smiles from the Koreans. It silenced the crowd, the heavily dominant Saudi crowd. The yeah, keeper brilliant. is the hero. Unbelievable penalties as well. Unbelievable penalties from South Korea. Tears from the Saudis. Cheers from the Koreans. And they Korea are through. facing Australia in the next round. But in terms of the way the game went at half time, you couldn't really see where this goal for Korea was coming from. It was a nothing Come game. On. Saudi, I thought, were the better team in this first half. Second half again for the opening 35 minutes of that second half. Korea were not in the game whatsoever. But, you know, Radif scores that goal early on in the second half. And it took for the 80th minute for Korea to stamp their authority in the game. They had enough chances to win it in normal time. Didn't happen. Missed chance after chance after chance. Up steps Cho in the final minute of the 10 minutes added on, or the one of the last minutes anyway. And then I thought, I thought on the balance of play with the amount of chances that were created in the game, Korea did deserve to go through today. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think they didn't stop going right till the very end. They scored in the ninth minute of 10 minutes added on time, which goes to show you that they just kept going throughout the whole game. They never stopped believing. And they have to give them a lot of credit for how they ended that normal time. And um, Klinsman, you know, used his substitutes well. Cho came on. And um, I thought what he did really well was he put Kang In Lee on the left. He put Son on the right. And he just spammed crosses in to that Saudi box. And they just couldn't live with Cho's physicality. One of them had to hit, him. didn't they? They couldn't live with him, uh, Cho, in, in, in normal time. And the pressure told. Um, brilliant um, header right at the end. Obviously, a great run from uh, Seoul as well. And that was good reward for um, an unbelievable end to the game for South Korea, which... They were just pummeling um, uh, the Saudi box chance after chance. That goalkeeper, Al, Al, Al Qasir, was making save after save. It looked like he was going to be the hero of the day um, with the amount of saves he was making. But up steps show, brilliant header. And in extra time, you know, Korea had all the attacking momentum and Cho misses, doesn't take the opportunity to shoot with that open goal. And you're thinking, are these moments going to come back to bite South Korea um, with all these chances they've missed? Which is it weird because with, on the 80th minute, you're probably thinking, how are Korea going to get back into this? They haven't even had a shot on goal in the second half. Yet, come extra time, you're thinking, the amount of chances they've had, was it going to come back to bite them? But you've got to give all these Koreans credit for the steel and the calmness they showed in the shootout because every single penalty was absolutely spot on right in the corner and joe the hero of the of the game with the two brilliant saves in the shootout yeah and you look at the second half from 45 minutes to 80 no shots from 80 till uh, 90 11 shots and that kind of just tells you the whole story of the game really and i don't understand why didn't korea show that attacking intent at any point before that in the game because they ran it so close they won on penalties but it could have been the penalties are is a lottery they should have won this game in normal time and it's going to send them uh, that's a warning sign for the next round against australia because australia is going to get more difficult than this against saudi so it's no give me game whatsoever um they know how it is to play australia it's going to be such an incredibly difficult game on friday they need to be better than this definitely but look saudi under mancini are playing a very clever game they you know they took the lead in in the second half and they and they kind of parked the bus played bed football tried to run down the clock they were playing a very smart game and korea had a lot of problems to deal with and they came out on top they came through it it wasn't the best performance up until the last uh, 10 15 minutes of normal time but from then on they were completely dominant they were creating chances very regularly and actually played some really good football so i don't know why it takes them so long to uh get to the point where they're actually putting pressure on the opposition because the, the performance for the first 18 minutes was unacceptable and based on that a lot of people are still going to be questioning Jur Jurgen Klinsmann but you have to give him credit because I think the way he changed things in that la latter stages um it really did affect the game and affect the game positively and it's what got Korea back in the game how um where he put players on the pitch and um, you know moving back to a 4 2 3 one I thought in the first half to be honest you know Korea it wasn't it was a very close game but Korea probably just shaded it but yeah the second half was dreadful but they kept going they never stopped believing and they got the equalizer that their chances they created deserved all right well the dream of uh korea japan final is still on we move on we face australia on friday i think 4 p.m kickoff right on friday 
Um, I have to uh, check that. I think it is, Reg yeah. Regardless, it is. it's going to be a big game on Friday and we'll be here covering it each and every kick of the quarterfinal for you guys once again. But Korea are through to the quarterfinals by the skin of our teeth. But we made it in the end. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment and come on Korea. Come on.